Welcome back. Terrell Owens is still with us. Skip, I know you have some questions. I do. So, <laughs> Mr. Owens, your numbers are clearly Hall of Fame worthy. And I will say this again, you and your friend Chad Johnson, the two most entertaining players in the history of the National Football League, and I don't think that's even close. By the way, he says hello. Well, thank you. <laughs> I hope he advised you on how to react today. It has been my contention from the start, and this is, as you know, not new. I'm not some Johnny-come-lately with this, but that you have been as divisive and disruptive of player as I have ever been aware of in the National Football League, and I'm going to walk you through this. Mm. It's why I nicknamed you Team Obliterator, which I'm mm. sure you did not appreciate, but I'm going to stand by what I've, I've been, said I've from been the called start. worse by I'm better. I'm sure you have. It's actually, well, well, we'll leave that be. Okay. But... Let's go stop by stop. Let's go San Francisco, Philly, and Dallas. And you have the floor. You, you can respond at any time as long as you want. But let's look at what happened in San Francisco, first of all, where it did get so bad at the peak of your prime that that organization decided you were more trouble than you were worth. And they decided to basically give you away to Philly. Do you remember who came back? Brandon Whiting, do you remember that guy, that defensive end from Philly? He played five games the next year and retired. That's who they got back for you because Terry Donahue, with whom I was close because I was covering the team, he was done with Terrell Owens at the peak of your prime. How long did he last? He didn't last Thank you. much longer. But, okay. but again, he was in charge at that point. Mm -hmm. And as you well know, you got into it with Mariucci over various issues. You publicly accused him after that game in Chicago. Remember that, where you said he took his foot off the gas against his yeah. good friend Dick John, and I think yeah. you stand by that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But trust me, the GM, Terry Donahue, was furious over that, and that was one of the final nails to him. Like, I just can't live with that anymore. Obviously, you got into it with Greg Knapp, your coordinator, repeatedly, and you showed him up on the sideline in Minnesota in the Randy Moss game. Uh, and who hasn't done that? I've seen Tom Brady, it, Brady do it to his teammates to, to, to and a, coaches. To some unknown so, so, receiver. So but, but I got I it, different? but you went up and down. Okay, but they, so they didn't makes, love it. So what makes it acceptable for him to do it, and I can't do it? He's looked at as a leader, and I'm looked at as a device, divisive well, to the locker room? He, he had one at that point when he... We, if you're talking about that one at Washington on the sideline, I think he'd won Bill four Brand. Super Bowls. Okay, well, yep. that's only one incident that you just was broke up. Was it Taekwon Underwood that he went off you're on? You're not answering you, the well, question, sure. Skip. Okay, but I'm just telling you it was just some no-name receiver who ran the wrong route, and he put him in his place, okay? So, so that, that's a reason to berate somebody? You're challenging somebody? your coordinator who was, I don't know why he was on the sideline exactly, but he was sitting on the bench and you probably were just ranting and raving I, at right, him. Probably because I was probably open a bunch of times and I wasn't okay, getting the ball. Okay, good. That's your, a fair so, point. But, but I left via trade, not because they wanted to get rid of me. That was because I had a seven-year contract with my fifth-year boardable. Mm -hmm. My agent, that idiot, idiot agent at the time, <laughs> yep. didn't submit the, he did not. submit the papers. So that triggered the trade. So it wasn't like they were trying to get rid of me. Yeah, that's a business move. Okay, but they, they <laughs> didn't want you around anymore. Trust they, me on that. What but, do you mean? They if they gave you if up they, for Brandon Wright. Right, if they didn't want me they would have gotten rid of me after my fifth year. Well, they were just they looking could have for traded the first me. exit. Well, you were really good, too. You were arguably the best receiver in pro football at that so point, is, and they didn't want point? you around anymore. They didn't, they okay, didn't just let, trade okay, me. Okay, let's get to the, the <laughs> deepest issue was with the quarterback, Jeff Garcia, who threw you a whole bunch of touchdown passes, and you took a shot at him and Playboy, and then you began to campaign and for I've Tim Rattay. And, 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 I, and I've taken accountability for that. You have? I've spoken with Jeff, and okay. we're good. Okay, good. Wasn't the smartest thing I've ever done, Skip. Okay. Thank you. But at that point, it was very divisive to that football team because you, you even campaigned to the media. I was there listening to it. You made a plea to go to Tim Rattay, the backup quarterback. There were other guys Garcia. that wanted Tim Rattay, too. Okay. He wasn't playing well. But you voiced so it publicly. In, right, right. So in and you were us for us to win. powerful force in that locker room. More powerful than the head coach and the general manager? I, I think you were threatening their power, their Well, authority. if that was the case, then they could have gotten rid of me. Well, they did. At that time. That's exactly what they did. No, they did not. And, and then it got <laughs> to the point where I said on KNBR on a show I did on the radio station there in San Francisco that, boy, maybe Terrell needs some sort of counseling. And the great Bill Walsh called me right after that show, and he said, we have gotten Terrell some psychological help.
I and, don't recall that. Okay, well, that's what he told me. I don't and know. yet he was your biggest well, proponent. Well, there is. If there is some psychological help and I went in, they should have some documentation. Okay. And I want to see it. All right. So well, you he, can't that's go what in he there, told you me. You can't go in there and say that I'm a pretty much a problem child, which Bill Polian has done. Okay. You can go check my high school records, college, and even to the pros. There's nothing mentally wrong with me. Okay. So to go on I'll and say that, that I'm a problem child, that's that's really an insult. I mean, what? What? Because I was, uh, I grew up a black kid, supported, raised by my grandmother and my mom. Didn't have a dad in the household, so that makes me a problem child. Well, there was the incident in Dallas that looked. What was that about? The I explained that. You okay. can go back to the. I explained that. Okay, go ahead. Since we're there, child, it, please. Okay. <laughs> it was uh, reported as an overdose of. So that's that's mental. I'm just asking for your. your I, I've side already of it. clarified it. Okay. All right, we'll go to the next. <laughs> I've point. already clarified. I don't right. know what else so to say. So Bill Walsh was your biggest fan in that organization, and he was to me the greatest coach ever. I, I thought, as far as coach and personnel director, all in one, I think he's beyond Belichick. But I've told you, uh, yeah. we went about back and forth on that on the Super Bowl. He said that you were as good at the chalkboard or the whiteboard as anybody he ever put up there, that as a receiver, you knew all the positions on offense. So just for the record, he defended you the way nobody defended you, and I think he was the last gasp in that organization who said, no, it'll work. We can figure this out. But everybody else at the top of the organization said no. So why so, wouldn't they value someone of that caliber? <laughs> why? Okay, so all I can tell you is that when I first got to the Bay Area, which was three years before this, I publicly defended you. And I was a lone wolf on that one, and I've told you this before, but a number of players pulled me aside, slowly but surely, this is the one where they pulled me aside, and they said, what are you thinking? He is tearing our team apart. But to your point, there were those in the locker room, and you just gave me a list of them, exactly. like Kevin Barlow and Bryant and, Young, yeah. all these Julian Peterson, and Jamie Beasley. Winborn, Zach okay. Bronson, Lance Schultz, all these guys. This happened in each of those locker rooms. It would be split right down the middle. I would hear this from these guys, and it wasn't a black-white split. It was it could be black or white both ways. So it didn't split like that, but it happened in Philadelphia and it happened in Dallas. So I've why so why wouldn't you so why wouldn't you create the narrative that I was a good teammate with the guys that spoke high? Highly of me I've always of said that. I've always said it was. That's not what 50, you got. No, but that's 50. not what you have been. No, you have not. You're, I have. You're, you're upset, <laughs> and it seems to me, and I'm just watching your body language, and you're listening very intently. I am. It seems to be that you're very upset that they value so much of what Donahue said and what Steve Mariucci said, but when Bill Walsh says he's the ultimate guy, he does so much on the chalkboard, he's as smart as any player. Nobody ever mentioned Nobody's that. taking that in consideration. Just like the guys that have said and coaches that have said positive things. Nobody has taken that into consideration. Okay, but I've brought it up to you on air on first take before. I told you all about Bill Walsh and how much he loved you. So just to stay balanced on this. So why so why isn't this information being taken in consideration? I don't know. Well, in the Hall of Fame, it's because in the, in the process, it's because of body of work, which leads us to Philadelphia. So you go to Philly and you sign another, another big contract. What was it? Seven years, forty-nine million, and everything was peachy keen from the start because it was you and Donovan. You were roommates and soulmates all through that first training camp. And you know what happened? It started to fall apart with Donovan. And one thing led to another. You didn't think he defended you enough publicly over That your was salary. one of the incidents. Mm -hmm. But there was a game, I can't remember if it was we were playing the Giants or or the Browns or whatever the case may be. But throughout the course of practice, they're designed specific plays mm -hmm. for myself. Ran it over and over. Knew it was going to work in the game. Ran that play to a T. Open. Wide open, I didn't get the ball. Every, I could hear I could hear my teammates from the sideline throw the why didn't he throw the ball? So I go back to the huddle and I say, like, dude, I was open. You know what his response was to me was? I know what his response was, but go ahead and tell Skip. Shut the F up. Okay. That was his first disrespect. year. For, okay. I played a year in seven games, so yeah, it was the first year. That was disrespectful. Okay. I've never I've never disrespected any of my teammates to that degree. And I didn't make us think about it on the on the field. I let it ride. I didn't argue about it. I said, cool. But I went into the locker room, addressed them after the game, man to man. 
knowing the things that have happened in San Francisco, mm -hmm. I didn't want to happen in Philly. Right. Went up to him, addressed him, told him I didn't appreciate that and don't have, let that happen again. For whatever reason, he may have taken, I don't know how he took it, he didn't like it, and that's where things started to unravel. So, so these are things that you aren't made aware of. That, I'm, that I've tried to do to make myself a better person and a player based on things that have happened that happened in San Francisco. Okay. All right, is it fair to say you and Donovan then just fell completely apart? I don't know what happened to Donovan. Trust me, when we got in between those lines, I did my job. I didn't necessarily have to talk to him on the football field, practice or whatever. For me, it wasn't an issue. As the season rolled along, it was people that brought it to my attention that it was an issue to go into Lincoln, Lincoln Financial Stadium, mm -hmm. do what I did, have 70,000 people chant your name, T.O., maybe that got under his skin. But for me, I didn't have anything personally against Donovan because I went there to achieve the goal of helping them get to the championship, get to the Super Bowl. That was my main okay. reason. Okay, Shannon. You I know a lot of what transpired in Philly. If you remember, you and I had a lot end up conversation at the All Star game in Denver. You remember that at Michael Jordan's party, mm. and you and I were talking, and a lot of the things that you're telling Skip now. So, are you saying from the moment that Donovan addressed you in front of your teammates, and you having a conversation with him after the game, that was that was the start, the beginning of the end of you and his relationship? I, I, I think it was. But again, I tried to be the better person. Unbeknownst to you and others that are getting that are getting side sideline okay, information. I've heard Donovan's story straight from his lips, and, well, and it's yours. it's the other it's upside down from your story. Okay. Well, go ahead. Right. Again, you can ask the teammates. All right. You can go to Philly. You can ask some of the staff. Again, even from Ray Sherman, who coached me in 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 in, in uh, Dallas, mm -hmm. he basically said, "Tell them to come, call him, talk to him." These are the guys that have coached me. If you want to know the truth, t call him. Okay, These are but, the guys. But the head coach in Philly and the coordinator in Philly, you began to have issues with and feud with Andy Reid and Brad Childress, right? You had some, some issues with them. Andy Reid, I love Andy Reid. Okay. I'm never going to say anything bad. Best coach I've ever had. Brad Childress, not so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. For whatever reason, he okay. probably had his perception prior to me coming so there. So again, you didn't love your contract is. after two years, your seven-year deal, and you began to have issues with management. And it got so bad in Philadelphia that Terrell Owens, again at the peak of his powers, got deactivated for the first suspended, then deactivated. They just basically sent you home, and then the next year mm -hmm. they released you. Right? Mm -hmm. well, that's that's pretty ugly end to what looked like a fairy tale Philly story. Well, you know. Skip, I, it's sad to say that I went there, I played, I did beyond what was expected. I went to the Super Bowl, I played with two screws and a plate in my ankle, broken fibula, played in that game, and guys like yourself called me selfish for playing in that game. That's because three of your prominent teammates told me they felt you forced your way back in. And how, what, 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 what forced my, how can I force my way into a game? that you That's just weren't ready to play and the Patriots knew it and so you were no real threat to them and yet Donovan force-fed you the ball. Would you have nine for 122? That's force-feeding me the ball? If they would have gave me a couple more, we probably would have won, Skip. So how is that for? How can, I, person, I can't force my way into a okay. game. If I wasn't medically clear, cleared to play or mm -hmm. they didn't think I was ready to play, they wouldn't have put me on the football field. I went to my doctor, Dr. Myerson. He mm -hmm. didn't clear me. I had to sign a a waiver from the Eagles to play in that game. Okay. Come on, man. Are you right. serious? That's what the, they were serious. So that should be a that. that should be a plus and not a negative. Exactly. But okay. again, according and to them, I was selfish for playing in that game. If it's anybody else that have that would have done the things that I did, he's tough. What? Okay. But they just just for the record, they did win two playoff games to get there without any Terrell Owens. But what does that mean? So you're just discounting what I did throughout the regular season? No, nope, you had a the, great regular season. But they the did swagger that I you. The swagger that I brought to that team that I think was already Donovan, there. Even Brian Dawkins, guys on that defense, knew and him. said that, they, that I brought swagger to that mm -hmm. team that they needed to yep. get them over the hump. So whether I played in two playoff games or not, that doesn't have any – any bearing on what I did throughout the regular season. And okay. you voted first-team All-Pro, correct? 
And then you Absolutely. did take one last shot at Donovan saying you weren't the one who got no, tired no, 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 of the no, Super no, no. Bowl. First of all, Skip, mm -hmm. I didn't say that initially. Hank Fraley and Freddie Mitchell said that. I never even saw How did Don it attributed to you. Because I did an interview in, in Miami and the guy asked me something about being tired, about this, that very comment. And I said, I don't know anything about Donovan throwing up in the huddle. I, this was my, my response. I said, if anybody should have been tired, it should have been me. Because I didn't practice yeah. for about a month and a half. And I went out there and I played the way that I did. That was my response. And you guys' media response was, y'all spent it and said that I said, that I threw him on the bus. Okay, that's him a fair bus. point. I thought but you Hank, said it. No. <laughs> Of course, you think a lot of stuff. No, I don't think I read. I, I read. So you uh, believe it's, everything it's, that you read? Donald Trump tweets a lot of stuff. You believe everything he reads? I, he tweets? I do not. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. We're going to take a quick break. Okay. We'll have more with Terrell coming up after the break. <laughs>